Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to talk about slope and its relation to parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, so let's start with the slope criteria for parallel lines. So two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So if we look down at example one, uh, we're asked to show that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So remember, the most basic definition of a parallelogram is that the opposite sides are parallel. So we need to show that AB is parallel to DC, and then we also need to show that AD is parallel to BC. Um, so there's two different ways we can find the slope with this image. One is that we can simply use rise over run. Um, so for AB, remember we always move from left to right. My rise is positive 3. My run is 4. So AB, uh, the slope is 3 over 4. And then that's the same for DC. So my rise is 3, my run is 4. So for DC, the slope is also 3 over 4. So we have just confirmed that those two lines are uh, parallel. We could show that with our little carrot. Um, another way you can do this is by using the slope formula. So for example, um, if you look at the coordinates of A, that coordinate is at negative 3, negative 2. And if you look at the coordinate of D, that's at negative 2, negative 4. And remember, the slope formula is um, change in Y. So we can do, we'll do um, Y2 minus Y1. So we can do negative 2 minus negative 4 over negative 3 minus negative 2 and then we just simplify so this actually becomes negative 2 plus 4 so positive 2 and this becomes um, negative 3 plus 2 so negative 1 so it's negative 2 and if you did the same thing, or maybe you notice that just following rise over run is a little bit quicker, from B to C, the rise is negative 2, and the run is 1, so the slope of uh, BC is also negative 2. So the slopes are, again, the same, which means that, again, we've just confirmed that they are parallel. So I'll do double carrots here. So again, whether you um, want to use the actual slope formula, or maybe if you have a picture, you can actually use your graph to do rise over run. Um, either way, your goal is to show that the opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so for example two, it says show that the quadrilateral below is a trapezoid, but not a parallelogram. So trapezoids, um, the way to show that it's a trapezoid but not a parallelogram is just one pair of opposite parallel sides. Okay, um, so if it helps, we can give our figure a couple letters. Um, so first, we can say, okay, these two look like they'd be the ones that are parallel, so let's check. Um, let's see the slope of... Uh, BC. So if I am going from left to right, I'm going up one over one. So my slope is positive one. And then the slope of AD, again, I'm going up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So my slope is also one. So we can conclude that BC is parallel to AD. But then now we have to show that AB is not parallel to um, DC. So let's find the slope of AB. I see 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So my slope there is 4. And the slope of CD, if I start um, on the left, I have to go down 1 over 2. So it's negative 1 over 2. 
So we can show that AB is not parallel to CD. And this proves that it is a trapezoid, but not a parallelogram. Okay, now let's look at example three. Okay, so here uh, we are asked to find the coordinates of the missing vertex in the parallelogram with vertices uh, J, K, M um, stated here. So I think for this one, a good thing to do would actually be to plot out the points and see what we're working with. So J is at negative 3, negative 2. Uh, K is at 0, 1 and m is at 1, negative 3. So if we connect those in this order, I can see that we're looking for a coordinate somewhere in this region. Um, so one way we can go about this is we can say, OK, um, I'm going to uh, find the slope from j to k, and I'm going to kind of match that from m to another point. So if I look at the slope here, from j to k, I'm going up 3 over 3. So I'm going to do the same, except in the opposite direction from m. So I'm going to go over 3, down 3, and that's where my coordinate should be. So it should be right here. Um, to double check that, we can say, OK, what's the slope of km? So for k, I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, so it's negative 4. And from here to here, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So it's also negative 4, which means this is my last coordinate, which I'll call it coordinate n, or you can name it whatever you like. So this coordinate is at negative 2, uh, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's just using what you know about the slope of a line um, to match it. And again, it's not just about matching the slope. We're actually going to make the same amount of movement as well. So we also have um, congruent opposite sides. OK, so now we're going to talk about um, slopes and perpendicular lines. Uh, so the slope criteria for perpendicular lines is um, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. So this is kind of a different way of stating something we've learned previously, that the slopes are opposite reciprocals. So it's just another way of thinking about it. Um, so for example, if two slopes are opposite reciprocals, um, that could be one slope is positive 1 half, and another slope is negative 2 over 1. So you see, if I take two opposites, uh, opposite reciprocals and I multiply them, creating a product, we get negative 1. So it's kind of a way to check to see if they actually are opposite reciprocals, and remember, if they are, it means the two lines are perpendicular, meaning they form 90 degree angles where they intersect. So let's look at number example one. It says use a graph to the right to answer the following questions. So first they ask us to find the slope of AB. So just like um, on the previous slide, we can find it in a few different ways, um, either using the slope formula or simply rise over run. So going from A to B, I see that I'm going down 3, and then over 6. So it's negative 3 over 6, which is negative 1 half. For part B, they ask us to find the slope of CD. So remember, we always go left to right. So from here, I can say that I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and over 2, 4. So 8 over 4, which is a slope of positive 2. Of course, we could find um, points in between on the line, like I could go up 2 over 1, and I see that I get the same slope. So now we're trying to um, determine wh whether A, B, and C, D are perpendicular or not. So if you compare the slopes, we have positive 2 over 1 and negative 1 half, which means, yes, they are perpendicular because the slopes are opposite 
reciprocals. All right, let's move on to example two. So we're asked to describe a method you could use to show that figure G, H, J, K is a rectangle. So we're just describing the method. So one, one way we could do this is by proving that all four angles are right angles. And the method would be showing that uh, G, K is perpendicular to K, J, showing that K, J is perpendicular to H, J, showing that H, J is perpendicular to G, H, and uh, showing that GH is perpendicular to GK. And again, that would show that we have four right triangles, which is the definition of a rectangle. Okay, looking at example three. Here, um, they ask us to show that J, uh, JKLM is a trapezoid with two right angles. Um, so let's actually change this to, sorry, this should have been a J. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, to prove that it's a trapezoid, we need to prove that two of the lines are parallel. So let's start by comparing the slopes of um, KL and JM. So for KL, remember we always go left to right. I see that we're going down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3, so it's negative 2 over 3. And for JM, down 2 over 3, so since the slopes are the same, we can conclude that KL is parallel to JM, meaning um, that it is a trapezoid. So we've just proved that it's a trapezoid. Now we need to show that there are two right angles. So we're going to need to find the slope of LM, and let's see how it compares with the two um, bases that we just found. So the slope of LM, again, we always go from left to right, is up 3 over 2. So you'll notice that positive 3 over 2 is the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 over 3. So we can show that KL is perpendicular to LM. So there's one right angle. And we can also show that JM is perpendicular to LM. So there's our second right angle. Okay, and let's look at this last example. So this says a city block is a quadrilateral bound by four streets shown in the table. Classify the quadrilateral by the streets. So let's start by actually um, graphing our uh, streets. So one way that it might be a little bit easier to graph these is to rewrite them in slope intercept form which remember is y equals mx plus b. So for Pine Street, uh, I would start by adding x, so 2y two, two equals x plus 4, and then dividing everything by 2. So y equals 1 half x plus 2. So remember, this means that our, let's see, I'll do this one in gray so we can keep them separate. Um, so this means that our y-intercept is at 0, 2, and our slope is 1 half. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, or you can go backwards. Okay. Um, now let's see if we can rewrite Elm Road, and we'll graph that. So I'll start by subtracting 2x. And then I can see in one step, I am in slope-intercept form. So we'll start with the y-intercept at 0, 7. And then this one has a slope of negative 2 over 1. So I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And I can continue that pattern. And I get a line that looks like this. Okay, um, now let's do Chestnut Street. So again, I'm almost in slope-intercept form. It would help if I divided both sides by 2 
So we get y equals 1 half x minus 3. Remember, you need to divide both terms by 2. So here our y-intercept is at 0, negative 3, and my slope is up 1 over 2 is 1 half or down one, left two. Okay, and last uh, we will do Cedar Road. So by subtracting eight from each side, I have an equation in slope-intercept form. So I start at zero, negative eight, and then my slope is negative two. So you'll see if I try to go down 2 over 1 from here, um, I kind of go off my graph. So let's go up to left 1. Okay, so now that I have um, my streets graphed, uh, they ask us to classify the quadrilateral um, by the streets. So the first thing that you might notice is that our black line and our red line have the same slope, which means they are parallel. So we can draw that in like this. And we'll see that our blue and green lines also have the same slope, which means they are parallel. Um, so we could classify this as a parallelogram to start. Um, the next thing that you might notice is that if you compare the black and the blue, we see that the slopes are opposite reciprocals, which means they're perpendicular. So we can actually see that this is a 90 degree angle, and that would apply actually to all four. Because um, blue and red have opposite reciprocals, red and green um, have opposite reciprocals and green and black as well, which means they're all perpendicular. So since we have um, four right triangles, we can classify this a little bit more specifically. We could say it's also a rectangle. Remember, rectangles are just types of parallelograms. Now beyond that, um, I can see that the lengths of the sides are not um, congruent, so I cannot classify it as a square, but there is, of course, one more um, broad term we could use. Of course, it is a quadrilateral, so we could also use that. So we could actually classify um, the this shape made by the four streets in three different ways. Okay, um, that is all for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching.